let me show you how did you know the spatial planning actually evolve in this country. So I have to take you back to you know 65, 1965 uh, third plan, where you can see the uh, the concept of functional reason actually evolved. You know, and of course when we say the functional reason, it could be you know delineated in terms of ecological reasons, and it could be also delineated in terms of you know river, uh, river systems. And the whole idea of river system is basically for the river corridor because the ease of transportation and subsequently, you know, the production of energy, so energy as well uh, is help uh, in the river system. That's why the, the, the concept of fun functional reason, uh, if, you, if you look at it, it evolved long time back in, 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 this, uh, in this country. And this is, uh, you know, actually, in 1969, this is uh, from Dr. Harko Guru, I think very, you know, um, big, uh, um, he was a big uh, uh, personality in, the, in this country, although he's a normal with us. But then look at here, the concept, he actually, he, uh, this, was, uh, this was set, you know, the entire concept was actually set uh, sometime in 70s. But his work was, uh, of, of 69, was very, very instrumental in terms of, you know, conceiving the idea of growth axis. In other words, not south uh, by growth axis. And of course, uh, you know, uh, taking a cue from that river basin system, then Kosi uh, growth axis, actually Gandaki uh, growth axis, Karnali uh, growth axis, they were very instrumental. And of course, Kathmandu was also there. And the whole idea of this growth axis was supposed to, you know, Again, let me quote from what he has written in his books. It is supposed to work as a sort of a ribs. And the east-west, you know, the highway links is supposed to work as a spinal cord. And the very idea of, you know, that mid-hill, that's, you can see in the middle, that's a hill region. Uh, if you look at the ecological, that separation, the mid one is the hill. Uh, hill. And the whole idea of this, you know, mid-hill uh, mid highway was laid down actually in the, in, in the 70s itself. And growth centers, you know, again, this uh, idea of growth centers, you can see that, you know, a lot of these regional cities at the border with India, and obviously in the middle you can see the secondary cities, and in the top you can see small market centers and townships. And the whole idea is, again, you know, about what actually the book says is, you know, again, again to serve the hinterland through this polynucleated, you know, uh, urban centers. That's 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 the whole idea. And these growth, uh, you know, this growth axis, growth centers was also supposed to, you know, um, actually promote the actually, uh, you know, s economic surpluses, exchange economic surpluses actually between these different ecological regions. And the concept of regional balance was again, you can see here, you know, I th um, um, uh, um, uh, here it was drawn. Um, in, in the FIP plan itself, you know, any disparities between, especially the economic, uh, 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 especially between the development regions and ecological regions. But the most interesting part here is, you know, that regional policy itself. The whole idea of this regional planning was uh, actually not to actually uh, fragment the national resources uh, into different regions, but rather to mobilize, you know, that. Uh, the resources, optimize the resources of the region itself. That was the, that was the concept, uh, you know, that was, uh, that, that was drawn during FIP plan. It is on this background, actually, national urban policy that we derived, actually formulated in 2007, Ministry of Urban Development actually conceived the whole idea of economic regions, you know, how these uh, development regions can be transformed into economic reasons, actually, self-contained economic reasons through combination of urban systems, and at the same time, you know, that uh, growth axis, the, the, the idea was laid much, much earlier. In 2017, actually, we, the work in this national urban development strategy started much, much earlier. Uh, so you can see here about the vision 2030, where we are talking about more balanced and prosperous, you know, urban system. Uh, so when we say urban system, it's about the, you know, networking of cities, you know, smaller townships, you know, market centers, and as far as strengthening, you know, uh, the relationship between these different, you know, urban centers. So with that uh, vision, you can see here how it's, it was supposed to be op operationalized. 
there were five basic principles actually through the lens of which this entire national urban development strategy was actually fo formulated. These were the five basic principles, um, you know, you might say the five uh, important f theoretical pillars of national urban development strategy, um, you know, which underpins the whole operationalization of, of you know, national urban development strategy. And now I'm showing you the big picture. You know, how did we visualize, how the Ministry of Urban Development visualized the entire, that uh, actually national urban development strategy. And of course, we have to put it in the context of several regional cities of India and at the same time China, because this is very important when we talk about north-south growth axis. You know, and these blue lines now show you uh, you know, these are the provinces, seven provinces. This is schematic diagram. So what do you see here in the east? You know, there, there are, actually I cannot show you properly, but then you can see here national, uh, the regional urban system in the east is just evolving. Actually, it is quite strong in Tarai flat area where you see the dark green line and the dotted line you can see in, in the hill areas. The system is very weak in that areas. Therefore, the whole idea of national urban development strategy is again, how can possibly we can strengthen this, this regional system. And come here in, in the middle part, you know, again, uh, there is a big actually system and quite a strong system, but it's still there are a lot of gaps you do see. And top there you can see Raswagardi actually. So these are evolving system at, at this point of time. Actually, urban system within the province itself be strengthened in connection with provincial capitals. That these were some of the important strategies that is there um, in national urban development strategy. So urban infrastructure, how we visualized, you know, actually we took urban uh, infrastructure investment as a sort of a tool as how possibly, you know, the areas which is quite backward in terms of development possibly can be uplifted. In fact, in the Midwest, Far West, and, and you know, the southern part of the railway, if you, if you see today, is still highly backward. Uh, therefore, uh, you know, improving the connectivity, the quality of infrastructures was instrumental. That, that has been prioritized in national urban development strategy. This is an administrative, uh, uh, actually, territorial you know, space, uh, we, we might say. You know. But then if you look at, especially here, the density map, this is a projected density map of 2021, you can see a lot of agglomeration has taken place, either you know, in the linear form, or it, it is become, uh, sort of a very strong cluster is emerging, uh, agglomeration is uh, emerging. How do you define this sort of a cluster, actually, which, is, you know, which has agglomerated, and in the space, they different, you know, this, this administrative actually boundaries work as a single, a very coherent, you know, space. This is something not addressed uh, at this point of time, uh, you know, uh, by our uh, legislative, uh, you know, provisions. Therefore, again, uh, you can see the improving legal basis for, you know, urban region and urban corridor. Even the question today, uh, you know, remains as how sh we should be governing, you know, this Karman Valley as such. Uh, look at here, you know, we are assessing for 293 actually municipalities almost US dollar 200, about uh, 24 billion is required. That means for the next 15 years, that means you know, each year that we have to be spending almost 1.62 billion um, uh, dollar that we have to spend you know, actually to, to realize um, you know, what we have visualized in national urban development strategy itself. And look at how much budget we, we, uh, it is available. 810 that million, that means there is a huge deficit in terms of budget to suffice, you know, the inf future infrastructure requirement and already the backlog that does exist in infrastructure provisioning. Now this is urban uh, corridor initiative, you know, that uh, something that we visualize in national, uh, you know, urban development strategy. Now I'm showing you how regional planning is actually being addressed in, in this country. The location you can see there in the east, uh, in the eastern part, and this is how we have visualized. We have taken several, you know, that uh, urban centers of the, of the highway corridors, east, west, north, south, and you know, try to understand the potentialities of each of these, you know, the urban centers. And at the same time, look uh, looked at the potentials of, of of all these urban centers, and how we can, uh, you know. Uh, 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 bring about any investment, we should unleash 
the development potentials of each of these you know, locations and collectively how can possibly they can contribute towards a greater you know, um, actually economic development in the region. We have conceptualized you know, the entire region of the East should, uh, should be actually benefiting you know, from, from the development of this, this corridor, which we visualize to, you know, to be moving towards a medium um, income you know, region by uh, next uh, you know, 15 years. That, that, that was the visualization we have made. And there was a severe debate as well from the lawmakers. If you make that much amount of investment in the you know, flat area, the hill area will dry down because of migration. Look at here, what we have done is the similar kind of that you know, uh, cluster concept, cluster city approach has been applied you know, in the hill areas as well. You know, so you, you see a different picture here. This is a small, actually, you can see several dots here. These are other settlements. These are the small market centers. But when that fun, uh, fun, functional territory we visualize, then suddenly you'd, you'd find a huge population living within this each, you know, the cluster. This cluster of Elam Fikal, for example, almost 110 or 20,000 people were living. Actually, that's, that's a very good, uh, uh, you know, critical mass for, uh, again, economic uh, development to occur. So you can see here, and suddenly you, you will start seeing the super cluster, you know, uh, but not a small cluster. When you combine all these smaller clusters, then you, you can, you can see the big uh, uh, super clusters, and here the corridor you can see in the bottom part. And the question is now the complementarity. How the, these clusters in the, you know, the hills can take advantage of development that could be here. The, the surpluses actually, a lot of these clusters actually export vegetables you know, towards India. Why not here? You know, that was the question that we asked. So that, that's how the entire concept, and you can see how the provincial periodic plan visualizes, you know, clustering of small towns and market centers. This is in their strategy, you know. And at the same time, you can, you can, you can see here how they visualize transforming the entire urban corridors into planned economic region. And at the same time, you know, uh, integrating market centers with the hinterland. The idea is through provisioning of, you know, urban infrastructure in these market centers, idea is to strengthen urban, urban rural linkages, therefore promote the development of villages as well in the surrounding area. That was the concept here. So you, uh, for the first time we have plotted like this, we can see here, you know, how the province has done uh, uh, the same, that cluster, actual cluster schematic diagram you can see there, and you can see the potentials, you know, the potentials, the spatial potential, that does exist in, uh, within each of these clusters has been now plotted, you know. And this, on this, uh, the right side, you can see how much investment is required to unleash that potential. This is what it shows, you know, including that uh, cost of that uh, urban corridor, almost two and a half billion US dollar that's required. This is the assessment that shows. And you can see here, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the integrated urban development plan we heard just about. This is land use proposed land use plan of the Run municipality. The idea of, again, having a green city, you know, it perfectly confirms with the kind of principles we have laid down in our you know, national urban development strategy. So you can see here, a lot of uh, the preservation of forest. Actually, there, these green parts are all forest. And you can see here, you know, the west, in terms of waste segregation, in terms of, you know, the, the, the actually conservation of green areas, that's what they have contemplated to make it, a, you know, a green city. The colored one are the municipalities, 293 municipalities, and the white patches are the village bodies, you know, sometimes they are called rural municipalities also. This red one, they don't still have IUDPs, you know, that means significant, almost one third, they don't have IUDPs. That means we have, yes, we have tried very hard but then two-thirds have uh, IUDPs. But these IUDPs was pre prepared in 2017-18. We have IUDPs, but then, you know, that thematic, that, that uh, the plant period has expired. And we don't have, you know, again, practices, actually, to review, you know, to review and update plan periodically. That's a very fundamental one. It's not a one-time event planning. You have to constantly, you know, actually review the plan and something we haven't done. 
And of course, there is now, you know, new actually uh, political le leadership has come. Therefore, at this point of time, what I, what I think is, in terms of plans, we are empty. But the question is, this different, you know, uh, uh, different that uh, pl uh, planning initiatives taken by different organizations is not being again coordinated with you know uh, integrated urban development plan. This is something we have to take again. We have to be very serious about it. And look at where we did invest. You know, I plotted actually from uh, you know 2002. What this map shows is the amount of investment so far we have made uh, since 2002. In especially these are the ADB and World Bank supported projects which are the chunk, actually, you know, very impactful, you might say. These are the kind of, you know, investment that is there. That, that's why I plotted this. Look at here, the investment. When I, when I actually uh, averaged uh, the total, uh, total investment that's being, being made by Ministry of Urban Development, you can see here, 29 million. But then requirement is, you know, 1.6 billion. But I showed you, you know, half the, um, uh, the, the, there is substantial money that's being invested, actually, by other ministries, you know, within the municipal area. For, take, for example, roads. You know, Department of Roads uh, could be investing money. Ministry of, you know, Federal Affairs could be investing money. Ministry of uh, Water, uh, you know, again, water supply could be invest investing money. Provincial government could be investing money. You know, uh, and local government could be investing money. There's no coordination. Who is spending what we don't know as yet? I think I would say the excellent work we did in UIP, um, again, the ministry did very well. This is, a, you know, again, a land readjustment project, large-scale land readjustment project, you know, that we did sometime in, you know, you, you, this is done 2009, long back. But that, these are very impactful, you know, investment that we made then. Um, that's, that's the point. And you can see here that this is the recent investment. Uh, uh, this is in Biratnagar. This is the kind of, you know, the roads, city roads that we have uh, developed, and this is also ex excellent example. And this is, uh, this is again, you know, investment uh, to lay down the sewer system uh, in Bradnagar. And of course, we have made several of these kind of investment, water supply, you know, drainage network, and so forth, the stormwater drainage systems, and so forth that we have invested. But we, ha but we have to be very, very cautious, you know, the impact as such, and how it is impacting the entire the province and other, you know, how the investment actually uh, making, uh, whether the advantage of that is being, uh, you know, being distributed across uh, the space or not. Again, that's a very critical question that we have to take into consideration.